So in order to talk about waste, I decided to bring my friend, the bin, full of resources. You're going to see I can bring a lot of things. But I need a stage, and the stage is going to be this big long, the big blue, the blue planets. You probably see David Attenborough talking about it all the time on the BBC. And this thing is important. It's 72% covered by the ocean, and it's something we love in my family. And it's running down the blood because my great-grandfather went half around the world during the colonial time in 1895, and he could not finish the full uh, world tour. And in my family, we love the sea. And you can see, even at a very young age, this is something I like, you know? The sea, the sound, the sun, and a lot of plastic beasts you can play with in the sand. It's always a lot of fun, a lot of colors, and you can play with it. And as a biologist, I was a bit frustrated because I could never really work in the ocean all the time I wanted. And finally, in 2001, we started uh, talking about doing an expedition for the Darwin Centenary. And finally, in 2009, this expedition went around the world, and I was lucky enough to go on this expedition. From 2009 to 2012, we went all around the world taking pictures of the plankton. The plankton is essential for captures of CO2, for oxygen. It's part of the climate change and the you know, carbon pump, so it's something which is very important. And I kept on doing this, and I work on sea on corals, deep in, deep in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the Maldives, in able to image this world. And when you image that fantastic world, you get those things. So those are tiny shrimps called copepods, and they are very important. They are all around the world. And when you take pictures of those things, 10,000, 100,000 of them, you often do this. Uh, for your information, the blue bits are the animals. The white bit is not. So whatever pictures of copepod you take in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, 5,000 miles from any land, you get this. Plastic is everywhere. And then so you say, oh, that's bad. No, that's great. The plastic is a durable material which can withstand whatever for a huge period of time. And it's absolutely everywhere nowadays, because we produce it in the 50s, and that's something we made so good that it can last forever. So this is a beach on Fakarava. It's an atoll that you cannot find on Google Map until you zoom about 30 times. It's in the blue patch. In the fact. And they don't produce plastic. The fish around don't produce plastic, but they actually they get a lot of plastic. Different color, different bits, and if you do a net, you get different it's because we cannot talk about plastic. We have to talk plastic with a nest. Because actually, plastic comes in different flavors. And it's great, because we can make fabric. And you're probably sitting on plastic as I, I talk. Your phone and internet world is based on plastic. We went to the moon based on plastic. All those plastics made the life we live in possible. This is fantastic and durable product we don't use very efficiently. We just discard it. And that's the problem. The problem is not the plastic. The plastic is fantastic. It's the way we deal with it. And unfortunately for us, what is happening at the moment is because the ocean is the largest place on Earth and dilution is the solution, as some people say, we have a ratio of one to five fish to plastic at the moment. And as we are very good on producing more plastic, by 2050, we're going to get one to one fish to plastic in the ocean. So I advise all of you to start sprinkling a bit of uh, plastic flakes on your fish fingers nowadays because by 2000, that's probably you're going to have fish finger plastic. So please start now, because maybe we're going to get very nice flavors, especially the blue one. You should try. So the problem comes from the fact that it's actually a very durable product, a very good product, which can stay 450 years. But after a sip on our plastic bottle, we use it for a month. And that's the problem. So the problem is also coming from there, sorry, is we have a huge primary production, 8,300 million metric ton, massive thing. And you can see that whoop, most of it go to be discarded. That's it. We use it, we throw it. We don't actually use it for 450 years. We use it for 20 minutes max, most part of the plastic products we use. And that's a problem. And you can see that the recycling is a tiny, tiny bit. And I was talking about fish. Yes, one-to-one -one fish is terrible, it's ugly. Let's talk about human, because actually we are human, and we are a bit concerned about our health. And for human, it's, sorry, 1 to 13. Nowadays, today, on Earth, all of you have an equivalent of 13 little plastic men related to 830 kilograms of plastic. And this relates to this. Most part of it is discarded. A bit of it is used for energy recovery. You know, those incinerators that we see smoking around, landfilling in the sky so you don't see the plastic anymore. Because the most part of the thing we do with plastic, it's waste, so we just hide it so we don't see it. So we Happy with it. And this tiny guy there, it's the recycled one, 10%. You say, oh, it's not, bad. it's not too bad. Actually, it's very bad. Because the discarded one tend to end up in the ocean, because that's an easy way of getting rid of it. Because you don't see it anymore, you're happy with it, that's fine. The one used for incinerations 
actually you recover only 2% of the energy. So you're wasting 98% of that quality material for nothing, and somebody has to bury the ashes anyway. And when we talk about recycling, the recycling is so complicated, so complex, you never know which plastic is which. The recycling bin is getting everything in it, it's a mixed thing. You're actually recycling only 2% of 10% in a good European country where actually it works. So that's problematic. And the problem comes from the fact that we don't consider the money. Actually, if all that plastic we have left somewhere could be turned into basic plastic material, it's only already 784 billion euro. And if you go even further, then we're reaching a huge amount of money, which any philanthropist would be happy to have to help the world as it is. So this plastic material has a value, and we should use it now. The problem also comes from this. Probably everybody went for it. Do you know in which bin this thing goes? Uh, is the blue there and the red there? Nobody knows. And the thing, it's even terrible because you end up having this. You crash it, everything together. It's a mixed bag. Even if you remove this bit, you still have this bit on it, and then you have the stickers, and it doesn't go. And after you try to remove the stickers, and the sister go and gap, and even if you get the sticker out, then you get a wonderful thing. Ta-da! There's so much glue on it that it's contaminated and you cannot use it anymore. Thank you very much. The recycling is too complex. It takes a lot of time, and basically you don't do it, so basically you export it, and then you have a waste broker which buy it as a very low cost, and then you're cornered. That's it. You cannot do anything out of it. And then basically you make those bail, everything is mixed together, and you export it because you have environmental regulation, so you cannot do whatever you want with your stuff. You have to be careful. The convenient thing is, let's go to another country where the regulations are different, and somebody will actually remove a cap, remove a label, and go for it. And you probably remember what happened to our computers a few years ago that we used to dump in Africa, and there was a stop to it. And nowadays, what is passed with our plastic is this. They burn it, they try to recover what they can, and things like that. So we basically, ethically speaking, having a very nice environment in Europe and country where we dump somewhere else. And funnily enough, recently, China decided that's enough. Keep your waste. We need a good environment as well. So now, it's your problem. It's your plastic. It's your money. You should use it. And then you say, what are we going to do? We cannot bury it anymore, the, the ocean is full of it, and then we cannot really smoke everybody with it, so we have to do something with it. Say, so there's no solution. Actually, there is one, which is just across the China Sea, Japan. Since 20 years, Japan has said, we should consider waste as plastic material, and we should look at recovery. Their recovery rate of plastic bottle is 93.5%. 93, they recover absolutely everything, and now they generate money out of that because it goes back into their industry. They don't import plastic pellets anymore. They're making, actually, a lot of money, but they have rules and regulation, and that's what we are missing in Europe. None of the logo I've seen so far, none of them are mandatory. There is no rule, no ISO standard, nothing considering your waste. If you don't want to put a logo for recycling, then be it. You don't want to put the plastic one, then be it. There is no rules. So how can we improve that? The first thing is probably the obvious biological contamination. You all are, oh, it's biological contaminated, so we have to burn it, or we have to export it, or we have to bury it. Biological contamination is simple. If somebody put a piece of meat on a tray, at least he could tell us to rinse it. That's basic. Tell me what to do, and I will do it. And then simple. It's, there is a sugary drink, I will rinse it. But it has to be on the bottle, so everybody knows how to do that. The next thing is, can we know why, in which bin we are supposed to put it? Is the blue thing going there? Is the green thing going there? Can we have a proper logo somewhere? Let's do this. So you probably know this one. This is mandatory. Everywhere, every bottle. If it's too much sugar, it's bad. And you get it red. Simple, it's mandatory, it's on every logo, on every single bottle, it's in the law. Nobody can go around it. Actually, when you look at a logo type, this is the one bit about the recycling. Half of it is wrong. That's it. So it's 2% of the most part of a logo you can have for recycling, and it's wrong. On the other side, you have that gorgeous thing which tells you everything about you should not drink it, but you're going to drink it anyway, but you should not. That's bad for you. <laughs> so proper thing. So why not do it the same way for plastic? You know what you have to do. You have to dispose of it. Be a good guy. Rinse well. You know every single bit. And if it's not recyclable, that's bad. And if it's bad, this is red, like sugar. Bad. Bad plastic, bad sugar, you should not do it. And don't combine the plastic with the sugar, it usually go very badly. <laughs> okay, anyway. And the last thing is, plastic is a fantastic product. You can actually do a lot of things with plastic. Let me show you through this. This is a plastic bottle, okay? And actually, I can cut it. 
And at the middle, I end up with a sheet of plastic, which is A4. And I, what can I do with it? Oh, do things like that. I can actually turn them into poles, and I've got a ring toss games I can play with my friends in the backyard. And this plastic, which was used for three months, may be used in my backyard for five years. And I know exactly what it is. So already, it has been transformed right in front of my eyes. With a flat sheet, I can make bookmark, easy. I can make the map of Ireland, very important. You should have one. It's like the pit one, but in plastic. And you can get it from the ocean. That's pretty easy. And you can even make boxes ready for retail. You put a stickers with your favorite product in it, and that's it. Straight for it. Straight from the bottle, straight back to the shell. The plastic had been reused, transformed. No shredding, no trying to sort it out where it's going. Everything is actually sorted. And you can do this thing. Uh, for information, this is not a computer simulation. This is a real thing. This is our ice cream cup in my lab for Ice Cream Friday. It's made of the top of a, of, a, of a bottle, very simply. You just use it. You turn it upside down, glue it on the others, cut it nicely on the top, and you have a perfect dessert cup. You can write your name on it so nobody steals your ice cream, which is very important. You can make game with it as well. And this is no limits. At the end, you can use the flakes and sell the flakes per weight, because the company may need it for injection molding of parts. Ready to go. And I'm going to give you a, to a story. You think uh, it's a bit kind of DIY and cutting its thing. I'm going to tell you a story about a company. This is the world leader carpet tile manufacturer in the world. What they have done is decided that all their carpet tile should be made sustainable. And they were looking for glue. And the glue they find is pony vinyl vitriol, and it's in windscreen. So they basically bought all the windscreen they could get for all the car broken somewhere. They melted that, get that the PVB, and they could get carpet tile glue for free. The nylon net they buy for fishermen give the thread for the carpet tile. You buy the carpet tile, they are sustainable, so they're actually the only one you can use in a sustainable building. And after eight years, if you're not happy with your carpet tile, they take them back and reuse them. So not only this transformation is simple, but it actually brings money. It has a massive value in terms of industry because the material comes for free, so already your product is cheaper than anybody else, and plus you are sustainable, and plus it's circular economy, so it's full benefit. And it can help your kids do lovely little arts for Mother's Day, so you don't have to buy a present. Ta-da! Very easy and simple, and the kids love it. All the students love our project because they are meaningful for what they want with their life in the future. So, back to the plastic. Please, don't burn it. Why should you burn your banknotes? This is valuable material, suitable for 450 years. Why do you want to get rid of it? And it's not limited to plastic bottles. I can show you something. For example, with the top of a cap, this is the only chessboard which can go underwater, over your head, <laughs> on top of your car, and it's only made of plastic bottles. So you can do a lot of things, and you can probably guess, this is my lunch breaks for three weeks. This is bag of crisps turned into a mattress for homeless people, which we really tested in Paris and in Dublin this winter. So save on your coffee break, save on a journal break, bring me back your bag of crisps. Thank you very much. And so don't burn it. Don't landfill it. We will have to mine it again. So please keep it up so we can use it. So mark it well. Make sure you know where the green bit goes and where the black bit goes and which bin it goes. And please transform it. Thank you very much.